Welcome to Seth Craft. I'm building a 20 by 30 shop and I have come to the point where I need to install the moisture barrier. This is simply a six millimeter plastic that's gonna go down up under the frame of my building and that's gonna keep groundwater from evaporating up into the bottom of my plywood base. Very important if you have a climate like I do here where you have a lot of groundwater that is evaporating up. Now it's kind of controversial whether or not you should put one of these down because rainwater might get onto that and cause just as many issues. But from my experience, there is actually a lot more groundwater evaporating up than there is rainwater falling down because it's basically all the time coming up from the ground versus whenever it rains, it may get on there. But I have a solution to keep the rainwater out and that is to simply tuck that plastic up on the high side of my building. So any water that does come in from rain will go under the plastic and not get on top. Let's go ahead and open up my 20 foot by 100 foot six mil plastic and get started installing it here on my 20 by 30 shop. I picked up this plastic from my local Lowe's. Um, you can get it pretty much any hardware store. Now I went with black and there is a couple reasons for that. It has a high UV resistance, supposedly. It'll also prevent grass and weeds from growing uh, up under your building, especially while you are building it. And that is important for code in a lot of places, but also uh, just keeps the surface nice and clean as you're working. I got 20 by 100 because I want to be able to let it fold down along my uh, blocking and be on the ground so it's easier to work on. I'm going to be installing this moisture barrier with plastic cap nails. It's just a nail with a piece of plastic on the top. I'll be hitting it with a hammer and I've also found that it can save your fingers if you just hold a pair of pliers like this and tap that into place. Now they make a, a nail gun that will put these in quick and easy. It's actually a stapler. Um, I don't have one of those fancy things so hammer it is. All right I'm gonna go ahead and get this rolled out here. Yeah. Now I'm gonna be cutting this into sections that are about, oh, seven foot or so. I've got roughly 55 inches between here, but I want this plastic to go down along the side, on the ground, and then back up. And that way I don't have to cut it for any of my paver stones. And I uh, also will have my uh, frame resting on the four by four and not on plastic. So it should work out pretty good this way. It won't be 100% moisture free, but a lot better than not having one at all. I'm gonna give myself an extra foot or two to work with over here and just cut this off before I unroll it. So hopefully it'll save some cutting time. There's just enough wind out today that this might be an entertaining, fun task. Whoo, that's hot. I'm going to start here on the high side. I want to tuck the plastic up underneath here. And I wanna have, oh, about a foot or so on that side. And so I do need to cut out this first uh, side a little bit just to go around this corner. Um, but what I wanna do is make sure I have plenty of room there. I think I'm actually gonna give it more like, let's do a foot and a half because the far end is going to have uh, a lot higher of a, uh, a pitch there. So let's go ahead and get one side tacked in. Like I said, you can use those pliers if you want to, to uh, keep your hand from getting smushed. Um, but this wood seems to be soft enough that I'm not gonna have much of an issue. All right, I'm gonna take my knife here and I want to cut a little slit out of this corner and that will allow me to tuck the plastic up under here, wrap it around, and then I can tack it in up under here. 
And this is what's going to keep any rain from getting onto the plastic from this high end. There we go. Likewise down here, I'm gonna to have to cut a little piece out of this corner just to get around that paver or that uh, cap block. Now that I have the plastic laid in here, I'm gonna take a bunch of these uh, plastic cap nails and just tack that plastic into place, making sure that it has enough slack to reach all the way down here to the ground. I had to put a glove on because this stuff gets hot real quick. In a similar fashion to the other side, I'm going to tack this side over here as well, just giving enough space there for that water to roll downhill if it ever were to get in here. We're just gonna move along, putting one of these plastic cap nails every, oh, I don't know, two, three feet. This is gonna be covered up by the building so you won't ever see it. I've built four other sheds in my time. The very first one, I did not put any kind of moisture barrier up underneath the shop. And about the second year in, I started getting some mold issues inside. And so I climbed underneath, spread out a moisture barrier, tacked it up in the same way that I'm doing here. And I also put a second one up as an underpinning directly up on the base of that building. And I have had a huge difference in moisture content inside of the building. Now this one is going to have a mini split for both heating and cooling, and that will help to reduce a lot of the moisture that gets inside of the building. But having this plastic down on the ground is going to make a huge difference not to have that ground moisture coming up and getting to the bottom of the building. I'm gonna also have some foam insulation board, and that will be another method of keeping some of the moisture from getting from the ground up out. All right, I'm covering up this last bit here. I only had a 20 foot section of this plastic, and so I have to install this other 20 foot section in order to have the full thing covered. Now, initially, I thought I was going to cut down on those uh, skids to expose the wood to have more friction, but since I'm gonna be putting three and a half inch screws on every one of my joists to attach to those skids, I thought, what's the point? Um, might as well keep an even better moisture barrier by not cutting it and just attach those um, joists straight to those skids and not worry about it. So, all right, once I get this done, we will wrap this up. I do wanna show you real quick what my other shed looks like and the plastic that I put up under that. That whole side is done, over there is done. I also built a little 10 by 12 recently, and that was gonna be directly on a concrete pad. And even on this concrete pad, it's worth having the moisture barrier. If you were to take a trash bag and place it on the ground or even on that concrete, come back after a warm day and lift that up, you will see some moisture that has built up on the bottom of that trash bag. So the ground puts off a lot of moisture, definitely worth protecting your shed with this kind of a six mil plastic. <clears throat> and the moisture barrier is installed. I'm gonna come back later and do a little bit of trimming along the edges, but for now, it is good enough. Let's take a look around real quick. On the high side, I folded up the edges so water can go underneath. It has been tacked down so that it won't blow around in the wind. As you can see, I've made kind of a little uh, trough here so I can still walk around in there to put the frame in, but it'll let the water slide on down that way. All right, this side, I'll need to come back and do a little trimming whenever it's time, but it's looking good. So I um, just went ahead and overlapped this piece right here 
So there's a double piece in here, doesn't really matter. Uh, I did trim off this side over here and I'll have to tack a little bit more on that. But uh, So any water that does get in here will find its way out this way pretty quick because it slopes down here really well. Now on this end, I just cut the trail or the tails off here and let it just uh, come out. So later on, I will continue to trim off this so that it is flush with the building. All right, there we go. And that concludes the moisture barrier here of my 20 by 30 shop. If you wanna see the rest of the build, then be sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell. I've got a lot more work to come. If you've enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up and I will see you in the next one. Bye.